My name is Carleen Dian Dadi, and today our guest is Samantha Kothias. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, she grew up in Port of Prince Haiti during a time of political turmoil, which resulted in death of many Haitians. This environment led her to decide early on what she want, that she wanted to be a health professional and led her family to look for a new life. Her family came to Massachusetts when she was 12 to begin a new life. Her father began working as a patient care assistant at a brigham, then trained as a nurse, and now works as a nurse at a brigham. Samantha watched her father and then followed his footstep. While in high school, she volunteered at transport patients around the brigands. Then she pursued a nursing degree at UMass Boston, working a part-time as a patient care assistant at Brigham's. Upon getting her nursing degree, she worked as hematologist nurse at the Brigham's for four years. Samantha decided she wanted to become a doctor and was accepted at New York Medical College. She did extremely well in her fourth year of medical school. Samantha decided she wanted to be trained in internal medicine and applied to multiple different training programs. Graduating medical student learn in mind March where they have been accepting for training. Samantha learned that she had been accepted into internal medicine residence at Brigham's Harvard program. She said that she and her parents cried all day tears of joy. The family dog was a little confused, but knew that something was going on. Sa Samantha kept her hospital badges, and when she was a volunteer, a patient care assistant, and a nurse at the Brigham's, just before the announcement of where she would be going for training, Samantha showed these best badges to her family and told him, I think I'm going to get another badge from the grid, from the brigands. She was right. Thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Samantha Kotias. And I just want to tell you a little bit of story about myself that wasn't included in the introduction. When I immigrated from Haiti and I was about 12 years old and I started high school at Dedham Public School, it was, um, it was a very interesting experience, I should say. At the time, my English was not very good. I remember when I was in Haiti and I needed to learn English, I, I told my teachers I, I didn't want to learn English because there was no way I was going to leave Haiti and start a new life in America. And lo and behold, <laughs> I ended up immigrating to the United States and I had to learn English. The students made fun of me quite often, but with time I learned and um, I perfected my English, I would say. Then I started to volunteer at the Brigham. That was my first exposure to the Brigham. And that started because my dad was working there and I transported patients and I met a lot of interesting individuals. One person that I remember clearly was the one person that helped me with my English. He told me that if I would listen to English songs and sing in English, then my accent would start to fade away and I would pronounce things the way that Americans pronounce. And that's how I would say that my accent definitely from time to time, if I am nervous, it does come up, but often I don't have an accent when I do speak. When I went to college, it was a lot of fun. I went into nursing school. I started working as a nurse. That was amazing. Working with um, cancer patients, it is hard. You get a lot of victories, but you also get a lot of losses. And at a certain point, I realized that with the work that I was doing as a nurse, I needed a little bit more independence. I needed to have more involvement. And it got to a point that I got very sad with all of the patients that I was losing. And I decided, you know what, Sam, I know the person that I am. Let's, let's do the next step forward, which is going to medical school. And 
I've never been happier. I'm very, very excited with starting my new job soon. That's going to be in a month or so back in, I want to say June 4th, I start. And um, I'm here to answer any questions. I'm here to tell you guys anything you would want to know about me. So please ask ahead. Thank you, Shakira. <laughs> if you can just give us one moment. Lady will ask the first question. So if I if I can just jump in. So um, at this point, we have a student facilitator who's going to kind of MC the rest of the questions. Um, and Alicia has been generous enough to uh, volunteer to play that role for us today. Um, so students, um, you guys should all be on the question page. And uh, Alicia is going to um, go down the list and uh, let you guys know when it's your turn to read a question. If Lady isn't here, I can read the question. So the first question is, what is the most important part of your job? Of course, the most important part of my job, and I will answer before starting, it's more of a general idea of once you start working in healthcare, it's your responsibility to your patients. The hard truth about being in healthcare is that no matter the position you're in, whatever decision you do make is very important. It could be a decision to bring, let's say water to a patient or a decision to start a new medication. These end up affecting your patient in a way that you wouldn't realize. So let's say I have a little story for you. When I was a nurse, I had a patient who presented and it was a newly diagnosed cancer patient. And I would work overnight and I was very busy. And I remember I walked into the room, I introduced myself and I said, I'll be back in a few minutes. And the patient told me that she was thirsty. And I remember I just went out of the room. I went about my work. I introduced myself to my other patients. I did all of these other things. And it just, it slipped my mind that I needed to go back in a few minutes to bring water to my patient. By the time I got to the room and I started my medications and whatnot, it felt that our relationship with the patient was a little bit off. And then she ended up saying, um, did you bring me water? And I was just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Let me go bring you water. The thing is it went 30 minutes. She was thirsty. She was in the room. And I let my responsibility to her kind of slip through by going around doing other things. So you need to be very mindful that when you do say something that you're going to do, you need to own up to it because it could be as simple as bringing water, but it does make a whole lot of a difference. Your patients come in during the hospital. They don't know where the where to go get water. They don't know where to put their clothes. They don't know the majority of the patients there. So you need to be responsible to make them feel comfortable, to make them feel that they're respected and that you are there as a protector, as a friend and whatever it is they may need. Carlene, can I ask the second question? Who inspired you to become a nurse? My father, 
inspired me to become a nurse. He, he is one of my biggest role model. When we left Haiti to come to America, he and my mother as well, they had to make a lot of sacrifices, leave their jobs. They actually started working at McDonald's while my brother and I were going to um, high school. Then my father went to college, got his nursing degree, started working, got us out of um, affordable housing. We ended up getting our homes and whatnot. So seeing the strength from my father and him being a nurse and realizing that, oh, wow, he's, he's the foundation of our family and I want to be a foundation for us as well. That was my inspiration to go into nursing. I'll ask the next question. Um, did you see yourself becoming a nurse? I, I would not say that I saw myself becoming a nurse. At that age, I would say I, um, I started nursing school when I was 16 years old. And when I was 14 going on into 16, I was very much into fashion. I loved making clothes. I loved drawing. I was very much into anime. I had all of these fun activities that I saw myself doing. And at a certain point, I was very much into Sherlock Holmes. And I thought, yeah, I'll be, I'll be a detective. That's definitely something. But the way life works is that from time to time, you're presented with options that you never really thought of or saw yourself as being. And you take a leap of faith. And then you realize, wow, this is, this is definitely a calling for me in healthcare. I see myself helping people. I see myself loving everything that I do. So that's what I would say in terms of nursing. It was more of an opportunity that ended up being the biggest blessing that I could ask for. Aisha can ask the next question. How do you feel about being a doctor? I am excited. <laughs> I, I don't have enough words to explain how unbelievably excited I am to start my job as a doctor. It's one of these goals that I had given myself very suddenly when I was a nurse because I thought nursing was going to be my career. And when I had a change of mind, not in terms that I didn't want to be a nurse anymore, but just I wanted to move forward in my career and I decided to be a doctor. And as a student or a soon to graduate student, I realized in all of my clerkship, the amount of fun that I was having, the attendings I was working with, they were amazing. The patients I was working with, they were so kind, they were so there were teachers, honestly, my patients taught me so much about how to be kind, how to be caring, how to be smart, and how to communicate properly. Those are the things that, honestly, you don't realize you're learning as much from your patients as you actually teach your patients. And I'm, I feel that once I do start working as a doctor, it is going to be stressful. It's going to be a whole new ball game. I'll have a lot of responsibilities and the hours are going to be crazy, but I am I'm ready for the challenge. I've always been ready for any challenge that's thrown at me, <laughs> difficult or not. Aileen can ask the next question. Um, when did you start thinking about becoming a doctor? Once I, um, I had one particular event in general that the thought definitely popped into my head. And it was one of my patients. I was working as a nurse. It was the nighttime. And she was planned to start a new treatment. My patient was planned to start a new treatment the following day. And unfortunately, I got some news during the night that 
my patient would not be able to start the treatment during the day. And I needed to relay that communication over to a doctor. I remember I sent in the message and I wanted the doctor to come see my patient. And this is one I said, I wasn't able to get the doctor to go see the patient right away. But to me, it felt very stressful that I couldn't talk to the patient about what I wanted to tell them. And I needed a doctor here with me to have a better conversation. And I think that was the moment that I realized that I want to have the ability to move around the system a little bit freely. I wanted to be on the forefront of my patient care. I wanted to be able to talk to my patient very confidently about what I thought and the things that I wanted the plans to be. And nursing allowed me to do certain things, but that level of autonomy wasn't very much the foundation of nursing. And that autonomy is mostly the foundation of being a doctor and attending. Those were the ideas. And that night, that was when I seriously started to think, yeah, I think, um, I think I'm going to apply for medical school. Claudia, can I ask the next question? If Claudia is not here, Carleen can ask can I ask it for her. What made you decide to become what you are now? <laughs> Thank you, Carleen, for the question. What made me decide? It's not one particular thing that made me decide to be who I am right now. It's when you think about it, when you're cooking, let's say you decide to make um, pizza and you start with your dough, then you put in the red sauce, your cheese, and then the pepperoni. And you think, oh, I'm going to have a pepperoni pizza. But then all of a sudden you're like, you know, I, I wanna add some mushroom to it because right now I'm feeling like I want mushroom topping on my pizza. So when you look around to find mushroom, you put mushrooms on the pizza. And while you're done with your pizza and you're eating it, then you decide to put sauce on it. So my analogy is while you go through life, you make a decision and you have a goal in mind, but the end point is never really where you end up being. So I wanted to be a detective, but then I'm a doctor now. And it's because of the different events that happened in my life. It was me volunteering. It was me being a nurse. It was me not speaking English properly. It was me loving anime. It was all of those things that just kept on stirring me in a pathway that even though I had a goal in mind, it wasn't necessarily my end goal. Thank you. Alvison can ask the next question. Was it hard for you to become a nurse? <laughs> I, all of a sudden, I would say the hardest thing that I really had to do was actually being a nurse and also transitioning to going to medical school or in taking classes while I was a nurse. That was the hardest thing that I definitely had to do. And the reason that it was hard is while I was working as a nurse, I worked as a full-time nurse and I did the overnight shift, which was 12 hours, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I would do that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And from Monday to Friday, I was a full-time student as well that would go to classes from 8 a.m. until let's say 5, 6 p.m. Then working as a nurse and being in an environment that was very stressful, and also going to classes, that was also really stressful. That would be the hardest thing. And Fridays and Sundays were my hardest time. There was a point that I felt that I was homeless because I would work on Sunday night 
Monday morning when I would get off work, I wouldn't be able to go home. I would essentially go to one of the bathrooms at Brigham. I would brush my teeth. I would change my clothes. I would take a, a quick shower in the bathroom and I would get in my car and I would go to my classes from 8 a.m. until 5 to 6 p.m. And that would just go on for three to four years. And that was definitely one of the hardest things I had to do. However, I got into the mindset that I rather tell myself this is hard, but I can do it. It was hard. I did it. I, it's not necessarily that I was just like, oh, it's, it's nothing. No, it was definitely a struggle, but I wouldn't change it. I got through it. I am where I am right now. And I'm very much happy that I pulled through. Aileen can ask the next question. Um, what do you like the least about your career? The hours. <laughs> we are required to work very long hours. We are asked to actually also not necessarily make sacrifices, but prioritize the thing that we want to do in life. And what things we can give away and then come into work. So as a new intern, we get four weeks of um, vacation. And throughout the year, we're working, let's say 24 hours, days, we're working night shifts, and we're working six days a week. That's, it's a lot to take. You don't realize it. However, once you know that what you're doing is not work and you enjoy it. So for me, when I explained that when I was a nurse and I was also going to school, it was hard. I went through it and now that I'm thinking about it, I can say, wow, it, it was not as challenging because I never thought of it as work. I thought of it as something that I was doing that I enjoyed. And Yes, that would be the least thing that I would want about my job. If I could work 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., that would be amazing. Have all my weekends off, that would be great. <laughs> but that, um, that's probably later on when I've been a doctor for much longer. <laughs> Alexandra can ask the next question. What's one of the best career decisions you've had to make? One of the best career decisions I had to make. Mm, I think becoming a nurse, even though after being a nurse, I decided to become a doctor. The, the work that I did as a nurse was very much who I am now and how I practice. So nursing has a different approach to care as um, physicians do. And it's not necessarily the idea, you'll hear often nurses care more about the patients and whatnot. I don't believe that's the truth at all. We we're all healthcare professionals and we all have this innate caring and kindness to us, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a doctor, whether you're even, um, support staff or whatnot, we all have that care in us. But what sets nurses apart is that there are certain things that we cannot get out of our heads, regardless of what we do. And those things are, have our patient gotten eight hours of sleep? Like we wanna make sure that our patients are sleeping and we wanna make sure that our patients got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those are things that when you are working as a doctor, you have the treatment care, you have the medications you're thinking about, you're thinking about pain management, you're thinking about all those other things that you can't necessarily start thinking on top of it, have my patients slept eight hours, especially when you have a list of 60 patients. So my best decision in career was to become a nurse, to have that in the back of my mind while I'm doing the job as a doctor. Because while I'm thinking, oh, this blood pressure is this high and I need to give you this medication, but I wonder, did you sleep or did you have breakfast? Okay, 
Carlene had a question in the chat and she said, did you ever feel like you would give up? Many, many times. <laughs> I'm here now and I feel like sometimes I might give up, but I think being human and having a heart, we feel things very strongly, especially to care of people. And I want to take a step back from talking about healthcare. I want to just talk in terms of actually family members or having siblings or whatnot. When someone that we care about is sick and they, they're they not talking as much or they're crying or whatnot, you, you feel it in your heart. You start wondering what it is you can do. So now if you go further and you have all of these people that you care about all at once, they're also sick and you also want to do something. The thing is, there are times you're powerless. You can't, can't save everyone. And that's one of the hard, hard truths that I had to actually accept. And when I went into nursing, my decision was, I'm going to be a nurse and I'm going to save the world. I decided to go into medicine and I said, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to save the world. But there are times that you, I can't, I can't save them. I really can't. And this is when you tell yourself that I'm going to be a doctor to make things better. I'm going to be a nurse to make you feel better. And this is where I help myself from not giving up. Because when you cannot do the things you want to do, it's very, very easy for you to just want to give up and not want to pull through. But those times you need to tell yourself that you're not, you're not losing, you don't need to give up. These are the things that you have to deal with. And whether it is in healthcare, whether it is with school, whether it is with hard times in life or whatnot, they will happen. But whatever best you can do, you should do it. And that's how you help yourself from not giving up and dealing with the feeling of wanting to but still be proud of the things you end up doing. Aliyah can ask her question. Have you ever dealt with any racial, racial issues on the medical scene? Racial issues, unfortunately, it is very, um, it is not something that can be ignored. There are instances where you do meet individuals where um, there is the intonation of racism. What I want to clarify is that in the world, you will meet a lot of people from different backgrounds, different beliefs, and different outlooks on life. And being a different race, being a different skin tone, whatever it is, people will judge and people will judge whether it be subconsciously or consciously. What ends up being the wonderful thing about it is that you realize that there are things you can deal with, even though it is racism, but you are able to talk and make yourself feel that you've made a difference. One of my stories about dealing with racism is that on, um, on a couple of occasions, I've walked into patient's room and they realized that I was a black female and I was told blatantly that they would rather a different person taking care of them. And when you are told certain things, definitely the first time this happened, I took it to heart. I was very much offended. I just, I didn't act in a way that I would say I was proud of. I, I lashed out, I didn't listen, and it was just that. But I learned that later on, it's not necessarily a hatred that you need to also show for. It is a feeling that someone has that is different they are not aware of it or they are aware of it. But regardless of what happens, you know your own truth. You know who you are. You know what you want to do. Regardless of what someone says about you or how they view you, you let it go and you move on. There is no need 
for you to reciprocate anything. You let them know, all right, I understand you don't want me as your healthcare professional, I'll see what I can do. And you step out and then again, you move on because the next 50, 100 patients you're going to have, they're going to be very kind and they're going to be very inspiring. And even the ones that are racist, they are still inspiring. You can still learn from them. We can't go away from racism and we can't go away from people having different views. It's how you react to them that actually makes the biggest difference. Melanie you can ask her a question. You're welcome. What does your profession consist of? My profession consists of, um, I don't want to simplify it as taking care of patients, but I would say that I am all of my patients' friends. I am all of my coworkers' friends. I think my profession is being everybody's friend, essentially. As um, being in a professional environment, you realize that your personality changes from when you're at work and from when you're at home. When I'm at home, I am very loud. I am very... I don't know, happy and I'm doing all of these other things. And when I'm at work, I'm a very much a toned down version of myself. So I try to joke around a lot with my patients. I try to bring them snacks if I can. <laughs> and I try to be a personable person. So my profession is to be able to have someone come to a hospital feel that they have no hope and they're scared. And for me to make them feel that they do have hope, they don't have to be scared and we're here for them. So I'm their support system. Marlies can ask a question. Um, I guess I'll ask the question. Um, do you think it's hard to be a nurse? It's hard to be a nurse. It's hard to be a doctor. It's hard to be a police officer. Honestly, I think, I think it's hard to be anything in the world, especially when you're dealing with people, whether you're dealing with their lives, whether you're dealing with their orders for food or whatever it is you do in life, because nothing ends up being easy. And from times things don't go the way you plan them to. Granted, working in healthcare when things don't go where, when they're planned, it often involves someone's life, which makes it very, very difficult. And it's not, it's something I'm still dealing with. It's not a magic one day you'll realize, oh, I can deal with this. It's an ongoing feeling that you have, whether you actually even win at saving a patient's life. It's still, it's really hard because you're always thinking in the back of your head, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to hurt someone? And it makes you stay on your toes. It makes you very vigilant. And you, you always have to be hyper, hyper aware of everything that you do. And it goes also for any other sort of job that you have. It's going to be hard, but you just have to put in the work. Ferris can ask a question. Okay. Um... What would you say are good qualities someone should have to become a good doctor? Hi, Ferris. In terms of qualities to become a good doctor, 
a sense of humor. I'd say that's one thing that should be really up there. Um, kindness. Kindness goes for any any profession that I can think of, whether it be health profession or being in customer service or whatnot. What else would I say? Diligent. Yes, you have to be very diligent. Also, you have to be very confident, not in the sense that anything you do is right or I am confident I can do this or whatnot. When I say that you need to be confident, it's more of the sense that whatever decision you make, you need to be able to be proud of that decision no matter the time of the day. So one thing that my mother always, always tells me is that before you do something, just make sure you're not going to be ashamed of it. And I think it's something that I've kept with me throughout every decision I've made in my life. And granted, there are times I've done things that I should have thought about and it happens, but in majority, I think a doctor, a nurse, police officer, firefighter, anyone, like a clerk, whatever decision you make, you need to be able to realize that later on, when I think about it, I will be proud of it. And those are, um, that's one of the best qualities I would say that someone should have. Marlies will ask her a question. Um, did the people who, that kept dying during the political turmoil affect you in any way? Yes, Marlies, definitely. It was um, it was hard because during the political turmoil, I was very young. I I would say from my earliest memories when I was probably I don't know five six years old until I turned twelve, the the environment was very difficult because I would go to school from time to time and there'll just be a lifeless body right there. Just there'll be gunshots on the body or, or there'll be blood everywhere and whatnot. And it was just, even though you saw it often, something wrong always felt to me because it just didn't make sense that I would go to school and I would have to see three or four bodies on the ground. It just, it didn't. And I would ask often, I would say, well, why, why are we just leaving the bodies on the ground? Or why are they even dead? Like, what is going on? Is to me, I say political turmoil because I was young. All I knew was that our government system was corrupt. But if you speak to the elders during that time, they would have better answers. They would say that the president was this or there were these groups that were fighting each other. But to me, it was a lot of massacre. It was a lot of dead bodies. And the way that I ended up internalizing this feeling is that I started thinking of it in more of a scientific way. So. I would see the body on the ground and they're not moving. And I would say, oh, that's weird. Why are they not moving? Or I would see the blood on the ground and I would say, I wonder if everyone's blood is red. And that sort of thought process helped me in a way that I didn't feel that my environment was hell. It was an environment that I could learn from and the pain and the sadness that I was feeling is a pain and a sadness that I shouldn't be ashamed of. It is something that's going on. And it's either I also turn a blind eye or I realize the things that are going on around me. I ask the questions that I wanna ask and I decide that, hey, I, I want to do something about this. I don't want to walk around and seeing dead bodies and be okay with it. Carlene will ask her question. How hard it is for you to do your job during COVID-19? Carlene, I would say during COVID, 
when um, things first started, I was a student in medical school. And I would say COVID made my medical school easier, not harder. Because in the beginning, I was in my psych rotation and we were taken out of our rotation and we were given three months of just online courses. And being online and not having to go into the hospital and spend 12 hour shifts was very great. <laughs> but very soon I wanted to go back to the hospital. It's just, I had a nice break with COVID. But then once I got that break and I recharged, I told myself, all right, I'm ready, bring me back to the hospital. I'm ready for those 12 hours. So for now, I would say it's not that COVID made my job hard, but COVID made my life a little bit different. So I wasn't able to hang out with friends. I wasn't able to go see my family because they live in Massachusetts and I was in school in New York and I couldn't come visit them even though I had the time off. And also when I wanted to go out and eat, I go out and eat a lot and I couldn't do that. So that was really hard. Those are the things that COVID took away from me. But in terms of my job, I was a student and it made it a lot easier. <laughs> I will ask the next question. My question is, what was the first, well, what was something that you learned while in medical school? Okay, Alicia. One thing that I learned when I was in medical school, let's see, the amount of fast food that I can eat is unbelievable when I came to med school because I left home and I moved into New York. I was on campus and I wasn't cooking. I, I just really wasn't making food for myself. So I ordered a lot and I went to McDonald's and I went to Burger King so much and I ate a ridiculous amount of fast food. <laughs> Jalissa can ask the next question. If Jalissa is in here, Aliyah, you can ask a question. Um, how is it moving here? Uh, how has moving here helped pursue your goal in becoming a doctor? Moving here is great. I, um, when I left Haiti, I moved into Massachusetts and I lived in Dedham. And being away for four years from medical school in New York and coming back has just been amazing. Being back with family. Um, Massachusetts is known for having a lot of great, great hospitals that have a lot of opportunities. Therefore, my career and being in Massachusetts, I feel very confident that I will be able to achieve so much more than I ever had set for myself. And honestly, even if it sounds cheesy, but the sky is the limit. I'm here in Massachusetts. I'm going to start my job as a doctor at the Brigham. If I can think of it, I can make it happen. And that's what Massachusetts and moving back here brings for me. And those are the things that will help me. Joelle can ask a question. If Jolly is in here, then Angela Mar can ask. Uh, 
Um, how about Ferris? Um, another question that I have is, how old were you when you decided to, oh, I think that's already been answered. How long did it take for you to know, how long did it take for you to get to where you are now? I'm, let's see, I wanna say close to 20 years now because my journey started when I was 16 and well, less than 20 years, I wanna say, because I had four years of undergrad then I had my four years of nursing, two years of other classes and then four years of medical school. So um, close to 15 years, yeah, I would say of me pursuing this dream. And honestly, it's still ongoing. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Mr. Banks wants to ask the question. Of course. Um, so you've had a lot of advice kind of embedded in your answers and a lot of great examples and, and um, just really great outlooks on life. Um, can you speak directly to the students and kind of say like, here's what I wish I knew um, when I was your age? And, you know, so that, so that they can kind of like take that in and think about like, how can this work for them? So what do you wish you knew when you were their age? What I wish I knew when I was your age. I think one of the things, if I could go back and talk to myself and tell them, tell myself is whatever you feel you're going through right now, that's impossible take a deep breath. It's not impossible. It's hard. And that's the best advice I would give to anyone. I've had instances where things felt very, very impossible and that I had no one around me. I was in this alone. And I just, I cried often. I felt angry often. And I felt very lost often. But I think those were things that I was internalizing and not realizing that the people around me have always been there. It's just, I never really paid attention to that. So when you're going to things that are impossible and you feel that you're alone, take a deep breath. Most likely you're not alone you have people around you, you have support system. Don't think this is just you in it because it never is. When I look back around the times where I really, I thought that this was way too much for me and I couldn't do it and I pulled through, it wasn't just me who told myself to go through it. It was my dad, that supported me. It was my mother that made me food. It was my brother who let me lash out. It was my friends who would take me out to eat. It was all of those things. And even though they were there for me, I think being young, I never really took it for granted. And I still thought that this was impossible. So me talking to you now, you will go through very, very hard moments in your lives and things that you're not expecting. And if that thought comes to your mind that this is impossible, that I can't do it, that this is, this is too much for me to handle, just take a deep breath, look around you, see who's there for you. And if you're unable to see who's there for you, then take a deep breath and look inside yourself because you're there for yourself as well. It's not impossible, it's hard, but it can be done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we've ran out of time to ask more questions. So I'm gonna introduce our thinker, Nady. So on behalf of the awards that my academy, we thank you so much, Ms. Samantha, 
for your time that you spent here with us, teaching her all about your story. We, we really appreciate and we wish you all the best in your life from now on. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you guys today too. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you once again. Um, and I wanna thank all of the students and guests who were able to attend today. And of course, um, Dr. Kotias, um, we really appreciate your time and your thoughts um, and congratulations once again on graduating. Um, we have a member of the audience, I don't know if she's still here, who's uh, about to start medical school after being a nurse. So I'm sure she uh, enjoyed hearing your story. Ms. Esther, are you still here? Congratulations. Yeah, she's on there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. I just sent in the chat. Um, it was a very, um, I think I, I related very much with what you were saying and I was commenting here and there, um, but you know, this is, it's, it's a whole journey. Like you said, it's, um, it can be hard, it can be challenging, but it's very rewarding at the end of it. And I'm super excited for your next step. Um, um, so yeah, wishing you all the best too. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, and so with that, um, that ends our career spotlight.